My first name is Kenneth, and um, I like to go by the name of Ken. I'm 50 years old. I grew up in Dakota County. It was kind of a tough, tough childhood. It was a lot of feeling like I had done something all the time. When 19 came along for my sister and I was 13, there was a horrendous car accident and I lost my sister, Jackie, um, 19 in the front seat. She was um, killed instantly. I started realizing he was having problems and when he would sleep, he would get upset in his sleep. So I punched a window and ended up hurting myself really bad. But then I was able to sleep. Then I could feel relaxation. It was now taken away from the mental and putting it into physical. My biggest dream was to have a child. And then I wanted to instill in that child things that had happened to me opposite. My daughter was about 14 when I was asked to go see a psychiatrist. I wasn't leaving the house. Uh, my mom was coming and paying all my bills. She was bringing me groceries. I had all the blinds drawn. I never opened the windows because I'd hear noises. I'm diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, bipolar, anxiety, and then just recently PTSD from my younger years of trauma. When I got diagnosed, I reacted shameful, I, uh, suicidal. I acted suicidal. I acted like, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world. There's, I'm gonna be a burden on everybody. You know, now I'm really gonna have to stay in my house and I don't wanna stay in my house all the time. When it starts out, today is just a great day. Then in your mind, there's this little kernel that says, oh, it's not gonna be that good. Something's gonna happen. Everything's gonna fall apart. And then as the days go on, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until all of a sudden it just drops. So you have to start saying, okay, um, time to call a case manager. Ken initially came to Guild because he was struggling with uh, being integrated into the community, isolating a bit in his apartment. He just needed to be referred to services, get back on track with, with employment and school. My first case manager went to Social Security with me and talked for me, and we bonded right off the bat. And she, came, she would start coming over once a week taking my garbage out because I wouldn't take my garbage out because I thought people were rummaging through it, looking at my bills. She started going grocery shopping with me and then she started taking me to coffee shops to get me out of the house into a public space. Then she was out for a day and this other case manager stepped in and said, well, why don't you just come up to the guild? And she said, while you're up here, why don't you just try out one of the groups? So I went into the group. I mean, I walked in past all the people sitting in the thing, didn't say hi to nobody, went in, went out. And she asked me if I would do it again, and I said yes. And so I did that for about a year. When I first met Ken, he was very anxious and a nervous person. And I've watched him grow throughout the years. I'd like to say that we had a part in helping him grow through that process. Community support program allows people with disabilities, mental illness, and to come someplace where everybody is like them, so they feel comfortable. My involvement there is I'm on the member council. He is really attentive to new members uh, that might be struggling with engaging with other members. If he sees someone walk in the door and sit down, he's the first person to go over there and introduce himself. You get a lot of self-confidence out of it. You get a lot of, like, I do matter, you know, and people do enjoy my company. Ken started working with me and he had been working at a department store and he realized that, you know, the anxiety and the stress of the job, it really wasn't a good fit for him at this point in his life. So we kind of started from scratch with finding something he'd be interested in. Now I work in a group home with four guys and I just love it. Part of our belief is that employment is a piece of recovery. And so I think Ken has, you know, really shown that that's true. I wouldn't be working. I wouldn't be working if it wasn't for guilt. My daughter was born seven days before my sister's death. She was born the 19th and my sister died on the 26th. 
So we decided we'd name her Jackie, and I was just crying and joyful. Then when she turned 18 and decided to go into the field of psychology, she then started learning about what my diagnosis was and connected it to the way I was. I'm so proud to have her. As we've gotten older, it's just really helped us become closer because he actually leaves his apartment and he's much cleaner and happier, <laughs> very much happier. I mean, without the guild, he would not be where he is right now, that's for sure. Since Ken began with Guild, I feel like his confidence and self-esteem has really grown. He's able to interact with people without losing his words, without kind of shutting down. With mental illness, there are days when it's okay and there are days when it's not okay. The cool piece about Guild is we really use those wraparound services and help realize that, you know, it's okay to not be okay. At this point where I'm at right now, I'm having a lot less anxiety. Instead of a two month depression, I only have like a one or two day depression. So I just look at one day at a time, wake up and look at it like the good times yesterday are gonna be the low points today. You know, so I'm gonna make even better times today. Thank you.